My name is Richard and I'm an intermediate Linux user diagnosed with ADHD and Asperger's. On a daily basis, I use Linux for Java programming and productivity and gaming. I'm also a trained teacher, male, 39 years of age, living in Sweden. I first start, you started using Linux in the late 90s. In this seminar, I will describe the conditions Asperger's, ADHD and dyslexia. I will also talk about how to include neurodiverse people in open source and Fedora. I use accessibility software due to being diagnosed with Asperger's and ADHD. I mostly use speech synthesis to find spelling errors and calendar software with accommodations. I will talk a little bit about my somewhat involvement with Fedora. I, I use Fedora Workstation 3.5. On this computer, it's an i7, an older i7. I joined Fedora because of the inclusive environment and also due to the fact that there were also other neurodiverse people in the Fedora community. When I have time, I like to participate in the Fedora diversity and accessibility groups. And I'm also very happy that Fedora has recently made a commitment to being an accessible Linux distribution. Uh, I mainly use Fedora uh, Workstation as a desktop OS. In the future, I may try out Fedora servers, but I like though that there are basic and easy setup guides for things such as doing a Active Directory or LDAP server on the, the Fedora Workstation site. So I will, now I will talk about ADHD. ADHD has these core symptoms. Attention can be shown through difficulties of concentration, forgetfulness and distractibility. Many are easily bored and fail to complete things which fall out of their areas of interest. Impulsivity can be shown through strong and emotional reactions to different things, difficulty listening to others, and difficulties in handling unstructured situations which require reflection and thinking things through. In some people, impulsivity may lead to difficulties in motor control. Hyperactivity. This is the point about difficulty in regulating the activity level according to what is done. So it's neither too low or too high. Difficulties in sitting still and winding down can be mixed with periods of exhaustion. And sometimes hyperactivity in children is often physical, while in adults it's more of an internal restlessness, with sometimes causing sleeping problems, amongst other things. And some people can have all of these three core symptoms, and others might have only two or one of these. And you can read more about ADHD in Wikipedia, for example. Uh, I will now talk about Asperger's. Asperger's is a form of autism without intellectual disability. According to newer manuals, it's also referred to as autism level one. Difficulties in social contact with other people, special areas of interest which may consume a large part of an individual's attention and time, difficulties understanding and using language in communication with others, deficits in motor skills, the individual might easily get caught up in certain routines or actions, unusual perceptions and sensitivity to different things such as sound, light, and so on. Now I will talk a little bit about dyslexia. Dyslexia is probably the, the condition I will cover least because I have met one or two people with dyslexia, but I'm certainly not an expert in, in this condition. Anyhow, it, it's common that people with neurodiverse or neuropsychiatric conditions might also have difficulties reading and writing. Sometimes these problems might also depend upon difficulties in attention, hyperactivity and impulsivity. However, the cause might also be dyslexia. People with dyslexia have difficulty recognizing and understanding words. Some common symptoms are that they might letters, place letters in, the, in words in the incorrect order and making reading comprehensions more difficult. I can, though, recommend that once in the medical library of the University of Gothenburg, I find a really good book on dyslexia. So you can find really good books if you want to know more about dyslexia. But anyway, I won't cover it in detail because I'm not an expert. Dyslexia isn't correlated with intelligence. 
dyslexia can't always be cured, but accommodations might help a great deal in school and the job market. Reading a lot and listening to audiobooks can lead to improvements in the ability to read and write of persons with dyslexia. Uh, now I will talk about uh, dyscalculia. It's a term for difficulty with basic math skills, such as adding and subtracting numbers. And once I met a student with these, and when we colored the x's and y's and so on in equations, it seemed to be easier to to recognize the math problems. Now I will talk about the strengths of ADHD. Ability to find unique solutions to difficult problems, able to talk about many different topics at one time. Good in crisis, some of the most stressful jobs are staffed by those with ADHD, empathic and intuitive and entrepreneurial. I would say that especially from a, a uh, English speaking content context, I would say that entrepreneurialism and ADHD is very, uh, it's, it's thought of as a very good thing because sometimes in English speaking cultures, being an entrepreneur, it's not that it's bad to be an entrepreneur in Sweden, but sometimes English speaking cultures that embrace the, the individual, for example, Virgin Records, Richard Branson has ADHD and, and so on. It's in, 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 if, if it, in, in an English speaking country, it's even more this thing with an entrepreneurial streak is, is lifted. Now I will talk a little bit about the strengths of Asperger's. High concentration and precision in work, attention to minute details, patience for repetitive tasks, higher memory power, hardworking and loyal. Now I will talk a little bit about the strengths of dyslexia. Yet again, I'm not an expert in this, but it seems as though dyslexic people might have some of them when it comes to strengths, they are better at remembering stories like both sounds and pictures and so on, rather than remembering text as a random list of data or a list of like C code include a uh, standard input output dot H or something like that. And that, may help them in perhaps acting or writing where it's very important to remember a script with images and, and so on. Excellent skills, <clears throat> brilliant spatial reasoning. Spatial reasoning has to do with how you organize things in a room and so on. Great conversationalist <clears throat> and tremendous empathizers. Now I will talk a little bit about the strengths of dyscalculia. <clears throat> And this is difficult, perhaps to, especially for me as a person that likes numbers to, of course, I've met a person who had this like one or two, but, but it can be difficult to imagine how it is to live without numbers. But of course, all people with this, like this calculia does not have, uh, doesn't have a perception of numbers. So it will be different in different people. But anyway, creativity, strategic thinking, practical ability, problem solving, love of words, they can be better at words than numbers, and intuitive thinking. And it's an ongoing debate whether dyscalculia is correlated with intelligence or not, but generally it's not considered with general intelligence, but it's a complex discussion. Now I will talk a little bit about neurodiversity. It's a term for understanding conditions such as these, such as Asperger's, dyslexia, ADHD, dyscalculia, and so on, as natural variations in the human gene pool rather than only pathological conditions. And all people are different, yet other neurodiverse people in the Fedora project we have may have some things in common, like trouble focusing or keeping time or whatever. Now I will talk a little bit about my personal neurodiverse strengths, my weaknesses are especially web programming and programming user interfaces, why I often use NetBeans or let's see, there's KDevelop I will try when I'm learning C++ to perhaps do user interfaces in C++ and once I hit the wall when I had an internship in web development, which I stopped after that. And also thinking about accessibility from a neurodiversity standpoints and hardware and electronics like I would able to take tell you off the top of the, my head that the program counter is 
red register that points to the next instruction that the processor is supposed to execute or that, for example, the, the register AX and BX and an Intel X66 processor can contain that data and then you add them to together and the data and the result of the addition will end up in the third register. Now we'll talk a little bit about my personal thoughts on interaction design from a neurodiversity standpoint. So I, I might be impatient sometimes, so I need to have progress bars to ensure processes haven't failed if they take some time. If I were to encounter si simple things, simple pictures on like Arduino, electronics and computing on a site directed towards people with Asperger's and ADHD, I would lose interest because I would that that site was not directed towards college educated people with Asperger's, which is the target group I belong to that have taken computing. On the other hand, I might appreciate simple pictures on sites directed towards people with autism or Asperger's on how to manage things in your home or how to get the, the washing machine started. I in the in the room I always think about where is the manual. Sometimes I Google I manage it eventually, but sometimes I like simple manuals. And uh, for example, if I order something in an online store, it's very important that the system clearly indicates that now we're processing your payment. This will take a few minutes. Please wait and seeing a progress bar. And also when it comes to Linux commands like uh, secure remove, I'm a privacy minded uh, computer user. And but I think it's you, you can when you use secure remove use a verbose option so that it's telling you how many wipes it has done. So so that so that is something I like. And men and women with these conditions will most likely describe their struggles, strengths, and weaknesses in different ways due to the different expectations placed on men and women. I won't go to in, in depth on that, but that is something I have observed and uh, that I feel that it's. Uh, now I will talk a little bit about how to include neurodiverse people, for example, in the Fedora project or in Red Hat. So, unfortunately, this slide is not so good, but I, I will read. I will read what it says. Not not all neurodiverse people are top programmers, and 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 this is important to realize. For example, once I looked at a. Uh, um, company called SAP, I will talk a little bit more about that, that had a neurodiversity hiring initiative, but you were able, you had to do a month of tests and only the best people would get a job. This is getting a little bit better now, now that IT companies, more of them are recruiting neurodiverse talent, but uh, th that is something. And I'm a decent programmer, and I, I'm very happy to teach new employees that have made, done Python to do basic C and C++ in Linux. But I'm not a top programmer. And But on the other hand, some neurodiverse people may be top programmers. So let's think about it in, in other ways. What, what can uh, non neurodiverse people do at, for example, Fedora? They, some neurodiverse people are great artists. They may be good at, for example, painting the wallpaper, the wallpapers, or doing user interfaces. Event organizers. So, some people with ADHD only or ADHD and Asperger's may be very outgoing and like to to organize events and perhaps go around talking with, to everyone or greeting people in the door or handing out uh, promotions for an event, for example, for a physical event. Uh, some neurodiverse people that are outgoing may, or they can all have, also have only Asperger's, may, may like to help people with uh, teaching or in the support. They can perhaps do R-E-L-H support, for example. And uh, some, some neurodiverse people with Asperger's, for example, may have very strong language skills and thus may be very good at, in, at translating, for example, Fedora or or H E L to different languages. So th th these are things to consider when when you want to recruit neurodiverse talent and also.
to think about what kind of neurodiverse talent do we wish to recruit. Now I will talk a little bit about neurodiversity recruitment, which is also a, a growing trend in, in uh, especially English speaking IT companies. And it may not always follow the same process or pattern as recruiting neurotypical people. I will, I will talk a little bit about, I covered the, the company SAP. It's probably more known in the European market. It's a, I believe think it has a base in Germany. It's, it has to do with business software. They do lots of business software that especially large European companies use. Microsoft is, is probably familiar to everyone. They have like neurodiversity uh, hiring initiatives. Some Microsoft people that have autism talk at conferences about this recently. IBM, I don't know if they have a special neurodiversity hiring initiative, but I believe they have interest groups for neurodiverse people. And then one company that, which is probably very familiar to, to many people, though that you might not always think of it as an IT company. MasterCard, I saw recently launched, launched a neurodiversity hiring initiative, which I saw on, on LinkedIn. So now I will talk a little bit more about the, the, the practical process of, uh, of doing um, interviews and tests so some neurodiverse people may all not always fare well on standardized recruitment tests on personality and standardized achievements and intelligence tests. And this is also true for me that I do a lot better when I did my evaluation, you get shown lots of pictures. Where does the next picture come in and so on? If uh, Lisa is having tea with someone, I don't do very well in those and I don't do very well in standardized achievements and intelligence tests. But if you ask me to do a question or a lecture on C++, I do fairly well. And I do fairly well in uh, real social situations like presenting at this conference. Uh, and I can also talk a bit about, uh, for example, I once applied for a job in an IT company where I had the best result. I won't mention their name, but anyway, I was before I was diagnosed, but I, I moved on from that. But I had the best test results of everyone. It was an IT support job. And it was a little bit strange that you had to work an entire day to see who's the best candidate by Swedish measures, not strange by American measures. But apparently I wasn't good enough at solving riddles. So I didn't get the chance at that company. I won't mention the name, but that can be one example. So get to know neurodiverse people in situations where they feel comfortable. So if you want to look at, yet again, all neurodiverse people are different. Not all neurodiverse people might interact well in a group. But if you want to see some of their ability to interact with our people, it's better if you do it in a situation they're comfortable, ask them to do a simulated support call, or in my case, ask me to do a presentation on C or C++, because that is one area where I really shine. And, and sometimes, uh, sometimes it's even more common in, in USA, like companies in Google, things like that, you have to solve problems. And I won't say that it's, it's a bad thing. It's not as common in Sweden, though we get lots of American recruitment trends. So it will probably be more common in the future. And it does not, must not apply to all neurodiverse people. But I rather saw programming problems, backend problems in Java and C++ rather than Python. This is not true for diverse people, but it can be a good way to ask the candidate if we're supposed to, if you're supposed to solve a problem during a programming problem during a job interview. What languages are you most comfortable with? Now I will talk a little bit about the ethics of diversity and inclusion, uh, like four or five minutes. So this is a question which requires a lot of thought. 
So the first question will be, wh wh why at this company or organization do we include people who are neurodiverse and disabled? Do we include them because we must fulfill some government requirement? Do we include them to show that we're an ethical company due to our social responsibility documents, for example? Do we include neurodiverse people and people with other disabilities because we wish to improve of, upon the situations of these people in society? Do we include disabled people because we follow some kind of ethical code of religion, such as Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, or other religion, which talks about the importance of helping people that have difficulties. And personally, I would see that that all of these have have a relevant a relevance because it will help neurodiverse people get a job. But of course, in, a, in an ideal world, which the world is often not, it would only be to the good of their heart. So. If I would talk to, to different organizations when it comes to why they should include neurodiverse people, I would push on different things like a council, for example, I'm not sure if it's council in the USA, but in, in Britain it's called council. And, and a council might, they often have uh, HR policies saying we're, we're an open opportunity, we're an equal opportunity em employer, we welcome everyone with a disability. Sometimes it may be true, otherwise it may be true to some degree, but if I would work with an organization ruled by policy, I would most definitely put an emphasis on, uh, on their policy documents. For example, if, uh, if I would work with a large US company that, for example, does uh, contracting with the government like an IT company or a company like Boeing or something, I would stress on them that uh, if you show that you fulfill legal requirements like ADA and include disabled people, sometimes it might be, might be an advantage when negotiating governmental contract and so on. And if, if I would talk to an IT company or like a regular company, I, perhaps I would uh, press on that, uh, including neurodiverse people make, a, make better, a better job environment or neurodiverse companies might be more profitable. There's a neurodiversity index and so on. And from what I know in, in Europe and America, it, it's common for Christian businesses or politicians to include disabled people in some way due to their religion. And I personally don't see this as a bad thing when it comes to my knowledge of disability inclusion and other religions, it's highly limited. But I know that Islam talks about caring for people that are not well in a good way. So it might also be true that not companies in the Arab world, but I'm, that my knowledge of that is limited. So I will leave that out for now. But as you see, all of these are questions which requires a lot of thought and personally from my perspective diversity process is a process which i've learned largely by practical experience and i would also say that it's not good to absolutely push a person forcing them to be a part of a diversity group if they not really want to of course there might be like sexual harassment or diversity harassment seminar if someone has said something that's not very good that you have to take in order to meet company policy that's one thing but it will not be good if you have a diversity group with neurodiverse people and someone that has put, been pushed into that group due to some reason it will not be good for anyone so that that, that is my point that it's not good to push regular people into diversity if it's not a must, it's better if, if some perhaps perhaps you must force people, but it's better if they volunteer. And 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 I know also it's another thing to to think about: do men and women involved in diversity and inclusion projects focus on different different aspects of these projects? And to that question, my my answer would be most probably yes. I sometimes think about uh, how to 
not to drop my airsoft gun when target shooting. Sometimes women may think about more about doing home software, and I think it's often about doing uh, uh, technical modifications to software for cars to make it, make them more ADH friendly. Not to say that men and women can't do this, these things, but it would be general. And now I'll talk a little bit about policy. For, for reference sake, I'm a grassroots labor and the Labour Party has long been a power in Swedish politics. But to not all, all, only get caught on, on the left, sometimes as a private citizen, I talk to, to Christian democratic politicians on disabilities as a, issues as a private citizen. And I can imagine that the Republicans, I know that Sarah Palin, she was a little bit criticized as governor, but she has a neurodiverse child. So I can imagine that Republicans also do uh, neurodiversity initiatives. And uh, uh, I would say that to reach success in Swedish politics and strongly advocating for neurodiverse people, it's not very easy to be a successful neurodiverse Swedish politician. There's a teacher called Alexander Schütte, who's also a left-wing politician in another party. And he's number 19 on the list for the parliament. And obviously, I'm not. So anyway, for me personally, but since again, again, since all neurodiverse people are different, perhaps Sweden is a good country for some neurodiverse people and perhaps for others, not like me, not. Anyway, not everything is bad about Sweden, but anyway, from my personal perspective, I would feel that English speaking countries are more embracing of neurodiversity. And thus I tend to do talks on neurodiversity in English. Nordic countries has a very long way to go when it comes to neurodiversity, though some things are slowly getting better, such as the fact that you're now able, for example, to join the Swedish Defense Force if you only have light ADHD, that was not possible before, and more companies are in Nordic countries are realizing the, the importance of neurodiversity. But I would still say that Nordic countries are at least five years behind when it comes to neurodiversity. And of course, there are also other neurodiverse people from the Nordics doing countries' speech such as this in English, of course. Uh, I, when it comes to comparing culture, I would say that a system where college studies are tuition free and where you get many chances to retake an exam without being expelled, that can happen in the US, I would say that it may benefit neurodiverse people. So that is one good thing about the Nordic countries that you can take, retake an exam many times without being expelled. Of course, you may not get the top job, but you might may need accommodations anyhow if you're not a neurodiverse person. So sometimes it happens that top level politicians listens to me. And of course, when it happens, when it happens, it makes me very happy. And I would say generally that younger people within politics are also better at including neurodiverse people. And if you big inspiration, I won't name, name all Christian Democrats, but I will mention two names though, Pia Stensland and David Lega. Pia Stensland is a responsible of uh, disability questions for the Christian Democrats, and David Lega is a member of the European Parliament, and he deals a lot with disability issues. And David Lega is an inspiring person because he has limited mobility and seeks to make the most of life and he does lectures on this and he also used to compete as a swisher swimmer in special olympics and you can find his talks in both swedish and english on living with a disability and making the most of life so that is uh, something that can be an inspiration to other people now i will talk like one or two minutes about how to include people with other disabilities in open source. And then I will open for questions or what I will show like the website of a, a few companies that, that uh, uh, have neurodiversity higher nation initiatives. But I have a friend called Mohammed who also used to be a laborer. He has a hearing disability and he taught me a lot about how you can include hearing disabled people in different contexts. For example, he was a member of a gaming club for deaf people called Spelis. You can read more about them at www.spelis.nu slash omspelis. And they, for example, organized lawn parties uh, for hearing disabled people. And for example, if you make an open source game, 
Muhammad also often makes videos in uh, Facebook communicating in sign language. Unfortunately, I don't know sign language, but including people that communicate in sign language in an open sourcing game might be easier, make it easier for hearing disabled people to follow the story of the game. And sometimes if you look at Barbie, for example, now they have Barbie dolls sitting in a wheelchair. I used to do an internship at a place called Funky Bator, which works a lot on improving life for people, for example, with mobility issues. And if you have a, of course, there's always a commercial side to these things. But for example, if you have, uh, if you have uh, a person with limited mobility, like a wheelchair in an open source game, that can be a way to change perceptions of people. So now I will ask about, um, uh, do you have any questions? Okay, I will take like uh, five minutes or something like that. I hope that the screen sharing works. Um, and I will show uh, like one or two sites on, on neurodiversity and then I will end my talk. But we'll, we'll see if the screen sharing works. Let's see. Uh, I will probably let me go a little bit on LinkedIn for five minutes and then I will end my talk. I'll just log on to LinkedIn and I will show you very shortly what uh, neurodiversity might look like. Because LinkedIn is probably the recruitment site in the English speaking the world that has a lot to do with neurodiversity. So I will just show that for a few minutes and then I will end the talk. I will end the talk now, but thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, you can always reach me at my email. Oh, yeah, okay, it's a question. Uh, well, it depends. That's a good question, Luna. Uh, it depends. Sometimes it's it's marketing and, and recruiters on LinkedIn, uh, of, of, of course. Uh, but sometimes it's also people who try to make a difference. So it, it depends. It depends. But uh, good, good. Okay. Th thanks, everyone, for listening. And thanks for letting me speak. Unfortunately, LinkedIn didn't work, but at least the screen sharing works. So... Thanks a lot for everyone for listening. Bye-bye.